So what I have for you today is a review video on a night vision IR system, the Magori 3. It attaches directly to the scope. The screen is incorporated inside the, the unit itself. So it is picking up the direct sight line of the scope, but you're looking at it in a traditional shooting position. I originally had the unit mounted on this particular scope, a three by nine by 40. This particular unit for the time being does fit on one of my scopes that has the controls for the illuminated reticle mounted on top of the scope eyepiece. What I had to do was pull the dioptic focal ring as far out as possible and that gave me enough area to actually get this clamp down on it. This particular night vision system mounts extremely securely onto this particular scope, but there's a couple of drawbacks to using this particular scope, which I'm now gonna get into. Number one, it's a much longer scope. And mounted as far forward on the rail system on the carnivore as this can go. This particular night vision system, the Magori 3, is going to extend the sight line of the scope quite a bit farther backward. Using this scope, I can't get any type of cheek weld on the cheek piece. My cheek is actually back behind the cheek riser, making for a very awkward shooting experience. This is a UTG Bugbuster scope, very short, and I have it mounted as far forward as I possibly can on this particular rail system. But with the Magori 3 night vision system attached, using the eyepiece that I'm using, I can still get my cheek onto the cheek riser with a nice weld and a nice comfortable shooting position. The system itself consists of mounting hardware for mounting the system onto your scope which is very simple. It uses a, a choice of compression rings. You choose the size depending on the diameter of your scope's eyepiece. You install the tightening ring first over the eyepiece of your scope, followed by the compression ring that fits the most securely over the end of your scope. Bring the unit up to the end of your eyepiece and this threads onto here, tightening down against that compression ring that's inside here. Allowing you to securely mount the night vision system onto the end of your scope. It's extremely light, so it does allow for a pretty secure fit without any tilting or unnecessary pressure on your scope. There's just enough clearance here, as you can see, between that tightening ring and the top of my mounting rail. That is something you're going to have to take into consideration with the scope rings that you use. You want them high enough so you get this clearance. Otherwise, you're going to have interference between the ring and your scope rail. And as you can see, this barely has any scope rings shorter than what is currently on here. Wouldn't allow this to tighten here. What I would have to do in that situation is move everything back so that this ring cleared the back of the scope mounting rail, 
pushing everything back once again and defeating the purpose of getting in a traditional shooting position, which I wouldn't be able to do, but this does allow me to do that. So you need to take into consideration the scope you're going to be using and the height of the rings you're going to be using. The rest of the unit consists of a battery compartment. This is where the 18650 battery goes. This is an IR light. The IR light adjusts to a wide spread out field of projection or a very concentrated field of projection. Down here you have a focus ring for the unit itself. This is opened right here if you have an adjustable, focusable eye ring to your scope. You can achieve adjusting that through this opening. That's one of the reasons why I would like to have a scope that does not have this, where this could fit farther on. Right now, this is actually, I, I do have an adjustable eyepiece to this scope, but this is clamped down over it and I can't get to it. A scope that did not have this raised section where this could be mounted farther would allow me to have more adjustability for the eyepiece of the scope, the focus adjustability of the scope itself, the adjustability of the unit itself, and further adjustability with the dioptic lens of the unit. So if it's set up correctly, you have a lot of things you can adjust between what's available with your scope and what's available with the unit itself. Now back here, you have a choice of the eyepieces that you wanna use. This has a very long dioptic tube and an adjustable, this turns, and there's a ring underneath here that turns, allowing you a better focus of the scope picture. What I found is with my eyesight, there is another piece here, much shorter, that screws directly into here and doesn't extend as far back. And has no focal lens to it. You're looking directly at the screen inside the unit. Your eye is extremely close to it. And depending on your eyesight, you can get a good focal picture of the screen inside the unit. In my case, in my eyesight, that didn't allow me to do that. I had to mount this particular eyepiece setup with the longer tube and an adjustable lens to get a, a good in-focus picture of the screen inside the unit. And this obviously extends the length of the unit farther back than this would. So I had to take that into account as well as far as where everything was going to be mounted. But you do get that choice. You do get that adjustability between eyepieces and the rings that secure the unit onto the scope itself, which are nice features. The back of the unit, uh, with addition to the eyepiece, has the control switches. A fairly simple operating system. Power on and power off. Uh, the control for the IR light. You have the ability to record what you're seeing onto an SD card. There's controls for that. To go between taking video or taking pictures. The menu pops up on the internal screen 
and you use the controls up and down, right or left, to change each individual feature. It comes with a pretty minimalistic, but easy to understand instruction booklet, which goes over the features of the unit itself, both with uh, the mounting to the scope, the controls themselves on the back of the unit, how to operate and toggle through the menu, your choices and features of the different eyepieces that can be mounted to the unit. It records in 720 pixel. There are more expensive units that have higher video quality, if that's important to you. Not by this particular manufacturer, but by other manufacturers. The units are extremely similar in the way that they look and operate. What I really want to get to and show you is an example of the type of picture that this unit is capable of. This next portion of the video I took looking directly through the unit in my basement at night, no lights on, pitch black. It literally is, there's no way I would even attempt to walk around in my basement given how dark it is down here. But viewing my basement shooting range through the unit itself it does come up with a very good picture. And one of the things you really should pay attention to is the focus of the unit itself on the target and the clarity of the crosshairs. Pretty decent picture, if you ask me. Uh, something I'm very happy with. But the only way, and it's a pretty big but, and there's no mention of this in the description of the unit itself when you go to various sites that sell this, or in the instruction to get a picture as clear as you can get focusing on your target and having your crosshairs come into focus. You need a scope with an adjustable objective. If you read a lot of the reviews on the unit, you'll hear a lot of complaints from people saying they can only get one or the other. I can only get what I'm aiming at in focus and my crosshairs are completely out of focus and not usable in any way or I can get the crosshairs in focus and not have what I am aiming at in focus. The way to achieve getting both what you're aiming at and your crosshairs in focus is having a scope with an adjustable objective, which this Bug Buster scope does have. This particular scope does not have, but it does create major issues with the Magori 3 unit. Using this scope and the Magori 3, I was in that situation. I could get what I was aiming at in focus. My crosshairs were completely indistinguishable. Or I could get my crosshairs in focus and not have any type of clarity whatsoever to what I was aiming at. It was either or. So once the bug buster with the adjustable objective was installed as far forward as I could on my optic rail on my hot sun carnivore and the unit attached to this particular scope, everything changed. It really brought out the best of this unit. I purchased the unit for less than $130 with free shipping. My final conclusion 
on the unit itself is depending on your setup and it has to be a very specific setup it can work out to be an extremely functional unit so you have to have the right setup you have to have the right scope rings you have to have the right type of scope I recommend a very as short of a scope as you could possibly get to maximize the function of the night vision unit itself with all that said with all that set up correctly it's an extremely nice night vision system for the money that it costs and is something I would recommend guys thanks for checking out this video shoot straight stay safe and I'll see you on the next one